A warm welcome to this session on real-time visualization of 3D Point Cloud with Python. And today I will just use three main libraries to allow you to handle 3D Point Cloud, which are big directly within Python and also to interact with this Point Cloud to segment it and to export them as a PLY and also maybe to re-import them as a PLY to see that you can plug that into any of your workflow for segmenting, labeling data, whichever fits your current goals. And as you can see, we are going to move through a nine step workflow that goes through all the main points that are useful to master. Without further ado, let's dive onto the first stage. Okay, so the first stage is to create a virtual environment with Anaconda. For that, you can spin on your Anaconda prompt or your Anaconda navigator, whichever fits best for you. I will zoom in a bit so that we see Conda env list. And this is the list of environments installed currently. I could use any of them if I know one has the packages, which some of them do, but I will show you how you can start from scratch and create a new environment. You can just type Conda create and for name. And here you pass, for example, visualization and Python version, let's say 3.8, to be sure you can move to 3.9 also, or whichever suits you best. Just be aware that some of the packages may not be available for some Python distribution. So here I need to correct Python and we're good to go. I will just press enter. Now that our environment is installed, we need to go into it to be able to install in this environment, control environments, secluded, let's say, all the libraries, the Python libraries that we will be needing. So I would just type conda activate and the name of visualization of our environment. Press enter and I'm in it. Once you are in the environment, what you can just do is use um, conda to install a package manager called pip. It will make it easier to install various libraries that are not present in the conda library. Great, so now we are sure that both Conda and PIP are installed. We can move on to installing the packages in it. And if I look here, it means we are getting onto step two, install Python library with PIP. Okay, so I get back onto my Anaconda prompt and here I will do PIP install NumPy. This is the basic library for computing and making matrix multiplications and such, which is quite efficient. Once this is installed, we just do PIP install Last by, this one is a library to manage point cloud data as LAS file format, very, very useful for geospatial processing. And then after that, I do pip install open 3D. And this is a library which I like to showcase what you can do directly within Python and also have the ability to have a, a nice viewer. And here we are, our three libraries are installed, so NumPy, LastPy, and open 3D. And if we move back onto our workflow, we now move on to step three, which is installing an ID, which will be spider in our case, okay? So if I get back here, I would just use pip as well, pip install spider, and this will make it handy for us to type code and have some kind of function that helps writing more efficiently. So great, now we have our spider ID installed and let's spin it up, so spider. This will launch our IDE and while it does this, we are going to download a point cloud data set like shown here. So to do that, I will provide you with a link just down below to get a very nice 3D point cloud acquired with drone with my friends Romain Neville while we were doing um, our PhD at the University of uh, Liège. Now concerning your data set, I will advise to put it in a folder called data, like here. And here I will write my code and put it here and the result will come here, all right? So this is all organized, this is all well. And I will now launch my ID, which is here and zoom in a bit where I will write the code, okay? And right click set console working directory. And this is all the code that I have and you see the path that I have here. So. Creating a virtual environment with Anaconda. This is done. Installing Python libraries. This is done. The ID is there. And having a data set cozy and warm in a specific folder, this is also done. So now the next stage is to actually make the libraries available to us. 
So what I do is I will just type import name of the library and some kind of little pointer that makes it easier to use thereafter. It's a bit quicker, let's say. So numpy, lastpy, and open 3D, as well 3D. Now the next stage, if I look at here, the next stage is to load the point cloud within Python. So to do that, I will just um, basically use the function read from lastpy, okay? And I will store that in a variable called point cloud which is my drawn data. So before going there, now that I'm in the right working directory, I can just go in my cell, press shift enter, and this will execute my cell. Now here, point cloud LP read. And just to be sure, I usually like to print the dimension that I have and also how is my color coded? Is it on 8 bit, 16 bit, 32 bits, uh, which you can do by just having two print comments. So for example, here, the dimension name and the maximum value of my red entity within my point cloud variable. And lastly, I will need to convert um, my point cloud object, which is a last by object as a numpy object. So for that, points will be stored as um, a matrix and colors will be stored as a matrix as well. Once all of that is done, and just press shift enter and as you can see in the output here i have xyz intensity written numbers all of the field of the classical las file and on top i know that my color has 16 bits so we need to handle that a bit later on so now if i were to put points here you see that i have xyz and if i were to put colors i have rgb so everything is well and we cannot use that directly within python so next stage is to go on to pre-processing the 3D point clouds, okay? So in here, pre-processing will make it very simple for this specific step. We'll decimate our point cloud to be able to handle it a bit better. And for, for that, I just give a factor of 10, for example, Pr put some kind of space to, to be a bit nicer. And I will create a variable called decimated points and decimated colors. And all that I do is this two point, two point factor, which will decimate and take one point every 10th point and, and the same for the colors to keep it, okay? And what I wanna do is just to check that the before and after st uh, stage are nice. So I could put it to eight, maybe a bit lower. So you can see that before I had 200 or wait, 20 million points and then after I have 2.5 million points. Okay, so this is the pre-processing super standard, super easy to do, but it allows you to then play around pretty nicely without too, too much overhead and without being too much dependent on your configurations. So this is done, this is out of the way, super nice. We are already on step six and let's check out what I've prepared here for you. We get onto stage seven, which is actually uh, choosing a visualization strategy. So there are one solution called PPTK, Open3D, and PinCloud and PyPotry. I will focus on Open3D for now, but know that this exists. And I will link also below an article that I wrote some time ago on Medium that highlights how you can use PPTK and the other two ones. Just a quick warm up around that. PPTK is discontinued. But it's pretty handy. It was developed by Here Technologies and it provides some nice, uh, let's say, wrapper to use also a visualizer that works with Octrees. So it makes it easier to, to, to work with the data within this viewer. Whereas PinCloud and PyProTree are two solutions that are handy if you work in, inside of a Jupyter notebook on the web without a local environment and you cannot use OpenGL. Okay. Else, I will recommend Open3D, which is pretty nice. And that's what I focus on right now. So to get there, let me get back to my script and go on to Open3D solution. So the first thing that we do is actually to generate a geometry, so an Open3D object, uh, which is a point cloud. From there, we will just pass to the point attributes, the, the decimated points for now, randomly, and to the colors attribute, the decimated color. So then our object will be filled. Um, the, what you see here is to just make it between zero and one for all the colors. That's what you need to have for Open3D. It doesn't have a function to handle that. And the last stage is to just plot your point cloud and have an interactive view of this point cloud. And you see that with these four simple lines, we'll be able to have something pretty decent. So if I press Shift Enter, you will see that pops up a little window, which is this one. And this is our point cloud. And in it, I have the ability to move and to explore exactly the little scene that was taken 
uh, I think was a five minute drone shot that we did on the university campus of Liège. So pretty nice. Huh? Um, as far as the control goes, so you have the wheel click that allows you to pan. You have the left mouse click that allows you to rotate like this. And if you have the left mouse click plus shift, you see that it makes this and the pan also if you press the control and click. So this is it for the control. Let me close that and go on to maybe the point cloud interaction with Open3. There is something super interesting there. So first off, I usually like to print out the comments that help you uh, use this mode of selection, okay? So I actually do draw geometry, but you see that behind that I put with editing. And if I move onto uh, our main workflow, I'm going right now into point cloud interaction, already step eight. So let's see what we have here. So draw geometry with editing. You see that it will be important to press K and then I will use dragging the rectangle. But if you use control and the left click, you have a polygonal selection. After that, you press C to get the selection output and S to save it, okay? So let me execute that. As you can see, I have exactly the same thing. So what I like to do is to go into an orthographic mode. Okay, here I'm perspective and here I'm orthographic. And then after that, I diminish the size of the point a bit to see a bit better in orthographic. And let's, for example, take out a car. So I will go from above. I will, uh, I will go like this, right? And like this. And now, I align my camera view and I put a bit better the point. So what I do is I press K and after that I can draw a rectangle of selection. If you are happy with it, you press C and it crops your point cloud. Then what is interesting uh, is that you can continue cropping, right? And for example here as well, I will crop, I will put it in this stage and uh, yeah, he did a selection, but that's okay. We don't need to worry about that. I should have pressed somewhere else. What I do is I press K and then again, I will just draw a rectangle of selection and press C. And whenever you're happy with what you have, you press S to save it. And I will save it in my result folder called cropped one. Okay, save. Yes, I replace it and I close. And this is done for the interactive um, selection and we actually went on to this step which is segmenting the point cloud and now I just want to show you that you can load this point cloud okay and visualize it again so I will create a new variable called PCD cropped and I will read this point cloud which is in the result folder and I will then visualize it so let's check out what we have and as you can see I have my cropped point cloud, which is also usable outside of Python. So this is fantastic. And you can then combine, for example, various point cloud or have that as part as a workflow to label point cloud and open them one at a time, crop, refine it and export it very easily. This is what I usually recommend to companies that work with that because it's straightforward. You can automate and plug that to powerful Python uh, pipelines. So this is it for this workshop. We went through this nine uh, various phases I define here, right? And congrats on going through all of this. Just as a reminder, you have the data set just down below. You have the article that I mentioned and the resources also down below. So don't hesitate to check this out to unlock this skill. Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. I intend to do more in 3D Python, 3D Point Cloud, 3D Machine Learning, things that really matter to you. So don't hesitate to drop a comment about what you would like to see next, and I will do my best to try and help you push your skills in